well, let's let's cover mentor. It's the easiest one. Mm -hmm. So when I shaped my story, I kind of showed you. I kind of showed you already how I discovered mentors, even though it was briefly. I was a complete blank slate, and I was open to everybody. Um, to the point where. Well, you have to recognize in what situation you are. So you can't put yourself up arrogantly. Uh, that's when that woman told me, like, if you would have approached it positively, it would have gone faster. The same goes with mentorship. So I have two theories on mentorship, which is one, you can go get it for free, and one, you can pay for it. I always advocate paying for it, but I, I know you guys are in a position where you can't. But, and this is the main thing, most of us look at mentors as in, we want to play basketball, we go for Michael Jordan. Don't. <laughs> it's not cool. What's the problem with Michael Jordan if you would want to play basketball? Somebody. Sorry? What's the problem with having Michael Jordan as a mentor if you would play basketball and you would start right now? He's a professional. Uh, to talk also. Hard to like Everybody it's always like impossible to be like, to be like him at first. So yeah, it's so professional. Yeah. And what's the most practical thing that's a problem with Michael Jordan? Because we don't have the skills of him. Well, he's a busy man. <laughs> he lives in the States, and he's a busy man, so he'd probably not be able to give you that much time uh, unless you pay him. And, and so he's like, there. And he's a professional. We're like starting out. You think like we're going to, like in his prime, if you would take all these supplements and have these specific diets, and all these workout routines. Do you think like I would start tomorrow with his workout routines and supplements and I'd be like playing ball like he is? No. So that's the problem with mentorship, the way people see it. You don't go for Michael Jordan. You go for the person right in front of you. And it can be a person here, or it can be a person out there. But the one thing that, that has to happen is this person needs to be around you, and he has to spend time on you. And it, it can be even time that he doesn't realize he's spending. So for instance, you go to networking nights here in Rotterdam. So how do I get mentors in this environment? I go to these networking nights every Thursday, and I'm approaching people. I'm like, hey, so what do you think of like building a company in Rotterdam? I've asked this question to a lot of people. I'm not sure if I asked you, probably yes, but I'm asking everybody. And then, Let's, let's just look at the analytics, right? So in marketing, you have this rule. Out of every 100 people, two to 4% will convert. So I always have that in the back of my mind. So I'm approaching 100 people, and I'm asking them, so how do you build a company in Rotterdam? And then out of those, a lot of people will answer me, but two to 4% will be actually meeting with me, wanting to know more, uh, chatting with me, have a drink, and when I first started out, um, TEDx Rotterdam invited me to the same event where Theodore also spoke at TEDx. And I started talking with the founders. And I was like, so how do you build a company here? I started chatting with them, and they were so excited. They were happy like, with what we were doing. And so they invited me to another event. And I was like, OK, I'll go there. Um, and this comes like the second part if you're wanting mentorship for free. If you don't have money, you need to exchange something else that is of value. And the one thing, the one commodity that any person wants is time. So you have the luxury of time, which you can offer to this potential mentor. So out of the 100 people that you've approached, two or four will pop up that will be very interesting to you, that can give you the time. What are you giving in return? So here, this is where you can give your time help them with an issue, which then they want to meet you again, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I brought my cameras, and I filmed the TEDx event, and they had an after movie. Uh, but it can be as simple as, so in the early stages, when I didn't have anything, I would approach people, and I'd be like, that girl that I approached, how do you get a girlfriend? How do you do that? And then when we were going out, for instance, I would offer her a drink. Uh, so she didn't have to pay for the drink. And then in return, I was asking like, her a lot of questions. Um, and the main thing, and this comes like the second part and the reason why people would actually mentor you, because 99% of people don't do this, is you take their advice, you apply it, and you share it back to them. If you do this, people will actually mentor you. 
because 99% of people will get you a drink and then they'll be like, hey, that's cool advice, so how do you do this, this, and this? And then it's like an hour that you drain away from them to the point where they're like, oh my God, like maybe you should pay for this because I'm coaching you. Instead of just asking, hey, I'm struggling with this problem, how to meet a girl, like, no. So I wouldn't go vague, I would go super specific. I went outside and I asked a girl this, or I went outside and I asked this old man, because I'm approaching old men now to get business. <laughs> I asked them this. So I don't know why, but they're responding like this. And then my mentor would answer me, so how about you change this to this, because they usually go on there. And then you go and you approach the same, like, same style of person and you adjust. And now you're not draining your mentor, you're kind of helping, using their advice properly. You're not draining them, they're giving you just one-liners. You go, you apply, and then you share your experience. And you always share like, hey, I've done this and the results are amazing. So every time I have my mentors, and still I do this, I, for instance, I'm struggling with Facebook ads, right? I go to my mentor and I'm like, this Facebook ad's not converting. And then he's like, try this, this, and this. So I go, I try, and then I report the results. Oh, I got three more conversions, but I'm still struggling with this, this, and this. So you see, so you're feeding dopamine to them, like good feelings and everything. So how to get a mentor? Think realistically, don't think Michael Jordan. Get close, like get close to a person in the vicinity, and then, Ask them practical advice, go out, apply it, and share it again. And it can be as practical, and this is how I get big clients as well. I stand at the same thing over and over. So I would, every Thursday, no matter what, I'm at Venture Cafe, which means the same people know me, the same people uh, talk to me. Uh, and every time I've talked to them, and they've actually shared advice with me, I go and apply it to the week. And then in Thursday, I come back, and I'm like, yeah, I applied your advice, it was really cool. Or some people started a new app, right? Like there's a guy that started a new app which like offers free coffee. So like that week I shared it with my girlfriend, she goes and tries it, and then the next week I'm like, hey, yeah, this is really cool, like my girlfriend tried it. So how do they feel? They, they feel like this guy actually goes, executes, applies, maybe I should share more with him. And then it's all about being the long game. So you invest, you invest, you invest. And then at one point, this is mentorship, you will hit a level where you kind of outgrown them. And so that's when their limitations become your limitations. So you kind of have to go to the next mentor. So there's never like one mentor. I have a mentor in health, I have one in wealth, in relationships, it's completely different. Um, but what helps me, for instance, is having that definition of health, wealth, and relationships. And it doesn't come from nowhere. So. There's a, a guy called Kenton Knepper that defined life into health, wealth, and relationships because he said that any and every problem you have in life, you can put into all these areas. Any problem you have in those three areas, if you take that model and you apply it to your personal development, because that's mentorship, then you have to realize that, okay, I'm struggling with, probably it's building a new life, so wealth, you need to get financially stable. So the first focus will be, I need a mentor, it's not Michael Jordan, but right here, uh, in wealth, where do I find them? And now you, and this is what we teach in Why Not Three, you have this silent day. Every Sunday is like a silent day where you completely map out your life. So you map out your wealth, and you're like, we're in Rotterdam, where do I find this mentor? Venture Cafe every Thursday, um, TEDx, organizes events every couple of months. Uh, then you have like these networking nights. Go on Eventbrite, that's, that's what I'm doing. You go on Eventbrite and you literally look at all these events. And then just be a little bit nice to people and, be, and just share your story. Hey, I'm struggling with, how are you doing it? And then just share back and keep in contact. And that's like how you start. And, and the one thing that we always say and for instance, with me, right? So you, when you go to whynot3.com, there's a 30-day challenge. Everything's free. And most of the people now on YouTube, everything's free. So you can go, and if a person in Venture Cafe doesn't give you the right advice, you go on the internet, you read a book, you go on the 30-day challenge, watch videos, like stuff like that, and, and you combine everything. 
So, which kind of brings me to like the mentorship, is it answered? Or like, no, it's okay, yeah. Come, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah you. Uh, it brings me to what I shared in the 30 day challenge, which is the power of consistency. You have to play long, long game. Um, Theodore, it took like two, three months before we finally hopped on the call. <laughs> so you play the long game and you build up. You build like relationships up. You don't go for, hey, Theodore, can I speak at Restart now? <laughs> it's like three months later, hey, do you want me to pass by? <laughs> So, so, yeah, just be, just know that it takes patience and consistency. So always show your face, always be positive. Um, and if you're positive, it'll go faster than you think. If you push it, it won't. It can happen, but it still it'll take longer. So that's my take on mentorship. At one point, you'll get to a point where if you trigger the power of consistency, you'll have mentors that will teach you how to get millions. And it'll take a couple of years. But if you do it every time, you'll get there faster than you think. So it, it compounds. So, and then I will, at that point, which you're not there right now, but I will advise you at that point, also like pay people. Pay people to be around them. Uh, that's your biggest growth hack. <coughs> Shortcuts to, to mentorship. The best mentors that I've got, I've paid to be around them. Uh, like I took, one mentor, I literally, I didn't have anything. I had like, I had like 900 euros in my bank account. I was still a student. I just like signed up to that sales job. And I knew that mentor was in New York. So I put the deposit down of like 450 euro. And that was the moment where I smashed all the sales records. And then like two months later, I put the next deposit down and I traveled to New York and it was all fine. So. Like there were moments in my life where I did that and it put me in the, in the position where I was next to these people. And you're only as good as the five people around you, which is super cliche, but it's true. But you can start with venture. Nice. So does that answer mentorship? Sure.